Hi guys, it's Ben CG here and welcome to Malta with me. I'm in the southernmost country in Europe which is made up of three islands, Malta, Camino and Gozo and they make up the country that is known as Malta. I've come here for a bit of that Mediterranean sunshine and some R&R &R. and to be perfectly honest with you, Malta is kind of struggling to deliver on that front. It's only about 21, 22 here in May. It's still nice, very pleasant, but it hasn't quite got that Mediterranean heat I was hoping for. I'm still going to try and make the best of it anyway. I'm going to try and see all three islands and a couple of different parts of the main island Malta. So in this first vlog today I'm going to be going over to the capital of Malta which is Valletta and you can see it right over there on the other side of the water. It's an old limestone town. Let's just hope it's not too windy to go anywhere with these choppy waters. Anyway let's go exploring Valletta. Let's go exploring Malta. Come with me. Here I am in Valletta, the capital of Malta, and it's pretty gorgeous actually. I'm quite surprised. Have a look at all of this. So one really interesting thing that I've learned about Malta is that it used to be a British colony and it still is part of the Commonwealth. And I actually didn't realize just how big of a mark the British have left here. I mean, there is still so much British influence around here in really blatant ways. For example, I think Malta is the only other country in Europe to use the UK three-pronged plugs in the walls. And not only that, they drive on the left side of the road just like us as well. So does Japan. We're not the only country in the world to do that. But Malta, you drive on the left as well. How about that? And it's not just systematic things either. They've got the same things in the supermarkets that we do in the UK. We've got Marks and Spencers, Cadbury's, all kinds of things that are really British here. And on top of all that, everybody in Malta speaks fluent English. It's an official language here, along with Maltese and I think Italian as well. Um, the Maltese language is quite interesting because it kind of evolved from a Sicilian dialect of Arabic and then fused with Italian and then they gave it a posh British accent on their British years as well. I do actually have to admit, I love the accent in Malta. They sort of sound like if Arabs were taught English by Joanna Lumley. Hello darling, welcome to Malta. Well, I just spent the last two hours sitting in a good old British pub watching Harry and Meghan get married, so that was nice. And it was nice to sit with all English people watching such a big event like that. And that's past the hottest part of the day, but uh, now I want to see some sunshine and some sights. So let's go have a look around the rest of the letter. Well, that site looks promising with a bit of blue at the end there. The character here, I have to say, is absolutely marvelous. I love it. The limestone, the colored balconies. It's beautiful. Guys, well, that's a really is beautiful. I mean, I just love the architecture, the streets, the colors of everything. Everything just pops. And yeah, it's really built up, but it's so kind of spectacular and so old. And just the, the feeling I get from walking around here is so nice. Especially compared to Slimo, where I'm staying, the tourist hub. That place is like a 70s free-for-all. But this is just beautiful. So I've now trudged my way up to the Upper Baraka Gardens, where there is a place called the Saluting Battery and they have these cannons, this row of cannons that fire off every day at noon and four in the afternoon. I'm not going to claim to know all the historical details of Malta, but I do know that these islands, Malta, Comino and Gozo, 
are a very strategic location in the past um, and have been, you know, the site of some bombs and some wars. So it's no surprise then to know that all these fortresses are here. Have a look at these. So what I've decided to do to see the gun firing is to actually pay a three euro entrance fee, which is pretty reasonable, to go down to the lower level from the balcony and you can actually stand by the cannons as they go off and feel the blast. Not too close, obviously, they'll keep it safe, but um, the, the proceeds go towards helping the Malta uh, preservation non-profit organization kind of thing. So that helps them to keep it all going and that's a good thing to do. So I'm gonna go and do that because it's getting pretty crowded over on that balcony. So I think it's gonna be a better view if I actually go down to the battery and pay the entrance free. Why not, eh? The place from where the noonday gun will be fired today is called the saluting battery where gun salutes would be given to visiting ships or dignitaries to mark a national holiday or to announce the news of an important victory. This place remained in constant military use until 1956, when its saluting guns were silenced forever, till 2004. Since then, its guns have unfailingly heralded the passage of midday on a daily basis, as you will witness today. to come closer yeah just don't touch it for the moment because it's a bit hot okay don't touch any of the tools huh? wow whoa you can really smell the gunpowder you can see right out the other end yep. and what what's the what's the mechanism like that actually fires it because you just pulled a string didn't you i'll show you basically it's empty, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, these three things, right? First of all, this piece, this is the trigger, right? Yeah. This is the uh, percussion fuse. So it's a brass tube that's filled with gunpowder. Top of it, you have a uh, percussion cap, which in this case is mercury alloy, but back then they had other forms of chemicals to use it. You simply put it in, attach the lanyard to the trigger, and when you pull it, and it hits that mercury alloy, creates a spark, which ignites gunpowder, thus firing the gun. Right. It's a really simple method. It's used from the 1830s onwards. It essentially replaces the flintlock mechanism used up until that point. No Wi-Fi required. No Wi-Fi required. <laughs> So this does go back a long way, doesn't it? The Ottoman army invaded. 1566, that's when Valletta was founded as the capital city. The French Revolution. Malta captured by Napoleon's army on its way to Egypt. The French surrendered to the English. Yeah, as per usual. 1814, the Treaty of Paris, signed between France and Britain, Malta becomes a British possession. 1814, and apparently we left in the 70s. Like, we've been here a long time. Start of the Crimean War, Malta became an important operational base for both the British and French navies. 1914, World War I. 1940, Italy declares war on France and Britain, Malta enters the war. Christmas Eve, 1941, the upper baraka and saluting battery are hit by enemy bombs. So this was bombed on Christmas Eve in 1941. 1945, end of the World Second World War, saluting battery is restored. 1964, Malta becomes an independent state. Lowering down of the Union flag and the hoisting of the Maltese flag on the night of 20th September 1964, bringing an end to 166 years of British direct rule. 
Sorry about that. May 1st, 2004, the noonday gun firing surface is restored back about after 81 years of its demise. It's been fired daily ever since. Malta becomes an EU member state. And since then, it's just been kind of restored and upgraded. Guys, I hope you can hear me. It's been an extraordinarily windy day here in Valletta and behind me is a beautiful panoramic uninterrupted sea view which goes all the way up to Sicily. I've really enjoyed Valletta, especially compared to the tourist district where I'm staying called Sliema. Um, Valletta is absolutely gorgeous. Sliema is a little bit rough around the edges and quite dated and tired but Valletta is wonderful. I highly, highly recommend it. It's given me a totally different impression to this country than when I first arrived here. Tomorrow, I'm going to be going to the beautiful fishing village of Marta Schlock and also inland to the centre of the island to the old town of Medina, which used to be Malta's capital. So if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like, comment and subscribe. Come and see me on Facebook for exclusive clips from the Malta trip at facebook.com slash bencgvideos. Go and check out my other travel series. You can also tweet me in with my username in the description and you can email me there as well if you've got business inquiries or fan mail or questions, anything. I'm always happy to hear from you and I will see you very soon for more here in beautiful Malta. Mwah. Grazie, Havuna. Ciao for now.